Yep. One Today, we've actually taken the masts from the lower position where we took all the sails off and put them ashore and we just hoisted the mast up again and then locked it up, tied the whole mast up so it's there static for the winter and we'll be like this probably till early March and we'll set the, let the mast down again, put the sails back on board, lash them onto the top mast or lash them onto the main mast and hoist back up again ready for next season. Come on, come on, come on, yeah, come on, yeah, come on, good boy, good boy, come on, yeah, good boy, yes. I bought Alice in 2005, she was actually a reconditioner, well she'd been converted from a swim headed lighter and she was available on the market, so I bought her and she cost 150,000 quid. I need to put a new engine in her, new, new uh, gearbox and of course epoxy the hull and this and that it came to the end I should think about 200,000 quid and with that I've then used her for 10 years and had the most amazing time a really good boat and of course being more down here it's warm and you're always afloat which is fantastic no question of being ashore as you are in Malden or Faversham you can actually just go sailing any time you want to the thing about barges, which I guess many people wouldn't even imagine, they are so sophisticated by design. We're talking of being able to hand by a man, a boy and a dog, usually a more useful dog than this one. But um, you can actually handle the boat easily with two. You need to be careful about how much sail you put up, you need to think, you need to judge everything. But everything designed to be used very efficiently and they were in 1900 when there was 2100 of them about they were the predecessor of the large lorry for very little cost they carried a great deal of weight and everything was designed to effectively do that and what I find so amazing is that every time you try and think of something new which might improve it you think a bit and suddenly find that is a way I already thought about it. Why don't I use that way? And of course, you're not the first person who thought about that. It's something that has been thought out well before. And the position of everything is planned, is designed for ease of use, is designed for ease of sailing, short tacking out the Thames, you can imagine, and with no engine. Amazing.
I tried short taking Alice up to the harbour in fact and it keeps you alert keeps you very alert and that's the crew about four or five it's a single hand or twin handed different planet no I think as long as I sail I'll never sail anything more complicated to sail yet simpler to operate Alice started life in 1954 as a swim headed lighter the only thing she did of any note as a lighter she was apparently towed out to Radio Caroline and supplied goods to Radio Caroline. I have no idea exactly what the goods were or why they required a 70 ton barge to take them out there. Imagination wanders. In 1995, she was bought by Owen Emerson because she was a nice shape, i.e. the lines were good, the lines, the shear was good. And he cut the swim-headed bow and stern off Having done that, he made and worked on a new swim-headed bow, a new bow, a new stern, put all the various gear you need for Thames barge, including the two lee boards, which because the barge was shelved in 18 degrees each side, he had to put two spreader bars, and the two lee boards rest on the spreader bar, which is tacking. That was all done, and he and Rita sailed her for, I think, a year and a half, and found it wasn't quite what they wanted to do and then so on. But you'll have seen from the photographs already the amazing stuff he's built. The amazing the pitch pine ceiling, floor and walls. Just incredible. Where he got them from I don't know, but I expect it was an old pile he sawed up and then nailed it all down into place. Amazing job he did. All the stuff, the galvanized bulwarks, um, the galvanized main horse, a tube cut in sections to make it bend, same radius as the, from the tack of the mainsail, and boy, she works well, and she sails well. She'll even sail, she'll tack through the wind without the mizzen up, which is, in barge terms, unimaginable. Without the mizzen up, and without backing the foresail, she'll go through the wind. It varies in a heavy wind. We do have to turn on the little iron topsail occasionally, but that depends much on the helmsman. Uh, yeah, since I've had her, which is 10 years, I've done a few things to her, painting the inside interior ceiling white, um, repaired the sails, various things that make her a little more easy to operate, a bit better to operate, but basically no change. She's still a Thames sailing barge. Okay, this is my personal boat, which I thoroughly enjoy. I guess I would just want to go sail with friends only. It doesn't work like that. There is a commercial element to keeping the boat moored here in Gun Wharf, just of maintaining her at all, and the cost of everything is, as everyone knows, immense. So I charter her quite a lot, but I have found that it's fun to charter because you meet new people, you have different environments, different sorts of people. A lot of the stuff we do is stag parties and hen parties, and uh, usually they get incorporated and involved in the sailing and uh, I guess enjoy it as much as I do. And somehow that rubs off on me and um, the rest of the crew. The other thing, of course, if people have got corporate events to show up rather like um, Fat Face did. Come down, you've got the accommodation for the crew on board and then we can sail around the Solent, wherever, and just show the place. And they can go out and rib, fill the boat, fill themselves. And it's pretty easy because the advantage of having the room on board and the place where people can sleep and eat and live saves a hell of a lot in hotels. And we're talking of anyway as, accommodation, as an accommodation barge it's quite good for sleeping on board, where well, you've probably seen for the photographs in this, be quite relaxed here. Many people have come down and looked in the galley and said, oh, that's bigger than my mum's galley at home. It certainly is. And it's as good as twin burners, two fridges, two freezers. It's just excellent. But the main thing I like about it, of course, is the fact she sailed so well. And she designed for the shallow waters of the East Coast and the Solent. And you can go anywhere. And with Alice, if you do perchance run aground, you can sit on a rock and it doesn't matter. Steel bottomed, close frame, she's very, very strong. So you can go anywhere and if you run aground you say, oh, wait till the tide comes up again. Yeah, well that's when I bought Alice, I, the option was to keep her up at Faversham, which could have done. But A, I've always lived in Bosham and therefore I have a house there 
and it's kind of convenient to be down here. And B, the berth I've now got at Gun Wharf is permanently afloat, which is just fantastic. So any time, any day, I can say, why, I, why don't I go for a sail? Because I can get out of the harbour any time. You have to use these things. If you have a boat like this, you must use it. To not go out is you know, irresponsible in my view. Well, I know last year I went out 74 occasions. That was either days out or whatever. And really just be able to go out and go sailing easily. An evening sail is fantastic. People don't really seem to use that much. It's a facility I offer May and June. I'd be delighted for anyone to go for an evening sail.